Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over modded villagers. Oh, that was kind of weird. But what that means is that we are going to be going over all of the things in the villager menu. So when you go to a villager, every action you can perform on it that is not item specifics. So basically we will not be doing attributes and we will not be doing custom villagers coming from spawners or anything complex like that. But we'll be doing things like villager potion effects, villager armor, villager trades, advanced villager trade editing, and other configuration settings for villagers. Let's just get right into it though. First things first, I'm going to get a world generated in Minecraft. So I'm just going to quickly open up Simu since it is the easiest way to generate a world real quick. So I've opened up Simu and all I've done is generated a super flat world inside of Simu and I have two different blocks in the ground. I'm going to do two different examples of creating villagers. One of them uses an in-game method and one of them uses a modding method. For the in-game method, we're going to use this lime concrete powder block. And for the one that we're doing through modding, we're going to use the emerald block. To ever be able to mod a villager in, you have to at least have one ported in like this lime concrete dust. So to do that, you're going to need to get a villager spawning. So let me just grab one of those. So I've got a villager spawning right here, and I'm also going to need a block of some sort. I like to use gold. So I'm going to swap over to this block, and I'm just going to build a quick structure here. Sorry if I'm really bad at building this structure. I'm very bad at building in Simu because uh, I'm using my keyboard instead of a controller or anything, and it makes it really difficult for me to navigate. But I'm going to come around here, and I'm just going to make this little structure uh, to trap the villager in place so it doesn't move essentially. So this will trap the villager inside on top of this block. I'm going to spawn the villager right in there. It doesn't matter what kind of villager it is as long as it's not like a baby or something. Uh, and we've got a villager trapped in there. So once this villager is ported in, this is all fine for the in-game method. But since we are going to be copying a villager in, I'm going to also need the coordinates of the block I want the villager to be on. So I'm going to grab a map really quick, which I do have right here. I'm going to open up that map and get those coordinates and write them down. That is negative 75, 18, negative 77. After I've got those coordinates, all I need to do is exit and save the game. All you'll need to do from here is port your world off of your Wii U or out of Simu to your computer. And remember, if you are doing it through Simu, this can be made really easy with the program I've written, which is linked in the description. And once that world is ported off, we're just going to open it up in UME. So today we're going to be touching the chunk locator. So if I just click on the chunk locator here, you're going to see this window pane open up. And there's kind of a lot going on here, but it's not really that bad. Uh, so you can zoom in and out to scroll in and out and view the map bigger and smaller. There are two sets of numbers you can see right next to where my cursor is. The top is the chunk of the world and the bottom is the actual coordinates in the world. So if I move one chunk over, you'll see it shifts the chunk over, but I move by about 16 blocks each time because the chunk is 16 blocks. I can also pan by left clicking and holding to move around the map. And once I'm in a chunk that I want to be in, I'm just going to go over to our tutorial area where the villagers were in this chunk, as I can see sort of outlined right there. I can click open and that will open up the NBT data of that chunk. Another thing to be aware and the chunk loader is you can switch between dimensions so I can see the nether right now and the end though the nether is really tricky to use because you can't see any of the terrain there obviously so you do have to go sort of based off the coordinates I can also locate the chunk of where something is so if I take the coordinates of the villager which was negative 75 negative 77 in x and z I can click locate and it'll bring me right over to the chunk where it is and then of course I can click open from there once we're located in this chunk, there's going to be a bunch of chunk specific lists and tags. The one we need to be paying attention to right now though is this entity area because that's where villagers are always located. As you can see, I've got a picture of a little villager here and the word villager to show that this is a villager. Another note is that sometimes when you open the program, the icons will be glitched. Just try reopening the specific world and it tends to fix itself. So I'm going to open up this villager and this is the main thing we're gonna be adding today. There are a bunch of lists and tags all over right here that we will be going over. If I left click on this villager, a bunch of different options are going to come up and essentially I'm just going to go down the list and explain each of these options as well as the ones that aren't on the list. So hovering over the entity properties area, I can change a bunch of properties about the entity. If I make them invulnerable, this will make them unable to die, at least in survival. And what I mean by that is even if they are invulnerable, you can still hit them in creative to kill them. I can make the villager silent so he doesn't make any noise. The villager can be glowing, which this effect doesn't work in Minecraft Wii U. So you can ignore this effect. I can stop the villager from having an AI, which is really important if your villager is going to be standing in the open and you don't want it walking around. I can change the villager to never despawn. I can determine whether the villager can pick up loot that's been dropped on the ground. And I can determine what hand is the main villager's hand. Left-handed doesn't really make a difference with villagers because villagers don't fight, meaning one of their hands isn't the one that yields a weapon. I'm going to turn on all of my normal tags, which are invulnerable, silent, ignore gravity, no AI, never despawn, and I turn off can pick up loot left-handed and glowing. Then we hit the check mark to confirm that and the changes have been made. The next tag down is going to be position. This is exactly where the villager is positioned, but know that the center of a block is always the 0.5 location, aside from height in Y. 
I would always keep update passengers and riding enabled. That just determines whether or not any entities that would be riding this villager entity would have their position changed as well. I'm gonna click check on this because I'm done here. And instead of going to the next one, which is gonna be custom name, there's something that has to do with position right down here. It's called the rotation. This is gonna work the exact same as the last time we touched player rotation, meaning the top number is going to change the horizontal way that the villager is looking, the north, south, east, west. So zero is going to be south. 180 is going to be north as an example. You can see it changing right up there. And the second position is going to be the direction up and down. I tend to keep it something very tame, such as negative 10, which has the villager just looking almost straight, but a little bit upwards into the air. Know that negative is up and positive is down. And if I change this to something like negative 90, the villager is quite literally looking exactly straight up and it just looks really cursed. So probably use really tame values for villagers. I wouldn't go more than 35 or 45 degrees. After that change is complete, I'm gonna go into the next setting, which is gonna be the custom name. This is really, really simple. I can just name this guy whatever I want. I'm gonna call him Bobby. I can also add potion effects to the villager, which generally isn't something that is needed, but one of the more prominent ones is adding invisibility to the villager. So I'm gonna give the villager invisibility level one. Potions are sort of complicated in that the level zero of a potion is actually the level one, meaning the level one is level two. So we wanna give them invisibility one since there isn't differences between invisibility levels. And I'm going to hit the max button to give the max amount of time, which is basically forever. I don't wanna show particles or else it would be obvious that the villager is invisible. And then I'll hit check mark on this, which will add a change under the active effect list. If I open up this, you'll see all the data about the potion. So there are two ways to edit this potion. One way is I could go into the add potion effect. I could change this to amplifier one and otherwise have the exact same stats, which would change this amplifier to one, or I can just go into here and physically change the amplifier. I'm not going to go in depth about what all of these tags do, but ambient essentially tells you if the particles are slightly transparent, like a beacon. Amplifier tells you how strong the potion is. The ID tells you which potion effect it is. Show particles is whether the particles are shown or not, and duration is the amount of time. Closing out this and going back up again, I can also change the items that the villager is wearing or has in their hands. Essentially, unless your villager is going to die, none of these items actually matter except the one on the head. The head is the only item that will show when put on a villager, and it cannot be an armor item, such as leather armor or diamond armor or a turtle helmet. It must be an item or a block. For example, I'm gonna put a, a gold block on this villager's head. I'm gonna hit the check mark right here. It doesn't matter the drop chance since we don't intend for this villager to die. And I'm gonna hit check. I won't be going over armor chances or armor editing at this point in time because the villager can only have an item on their head. If you do want to change the, the appearance of the item on their head, perhaps with an enchantment, you just open the armor items list right here and you can enchant the item from right here. So let's just say I want to give this gold block protection one. Uh, of course, blocks don't show enchantments, but this is just an example of how you could do that. Going back up into the villager list, I can also change the villager trades, but I want to get to this one last because it's the most complicated. If I go down one more, I see the villager career. This is very, very simple. You just choose a career that you want the villager to be. I'm going to choose this one to be a librarian. And let's save our changes for now. Because we did a lot, let's go over what we just did. First of all, we changed the villager to be invulnerable, silent, ignore gravity, have no AI, and never despawn. We made sure the villager was centered, and we changed the way that the villager was facing. After that, we changed the name of the villager, made the villager invisible, added a gold block, which is enchanted onto the villager's head and changed the career to a librarian. Before we do anything else, why don't we try out these changes to make sure that they're working? So I am loaded back into the world here. And as you can see, if I break these gold blocks out of the way, the villager is in the world. Now you might notice that the villager just barely turned invisible right there. That's because invisibility effects on mobs take a minute to load in. So it might be a moment whenever you load into the world before the villagers become invisible. But as you can see, we've got a villager with the gold block on their head. If I try to trade with them, nothing happens because we didn't give them any trades, but I can hit them in creative. Though if we go into survival, as you can see, I cannot hit them because they're invulnerable. They have no AI, which means they aren't moving or nothing happens when I hit them either. As well as when I hit them, they aren't making a noise. And if you remember from when I loaded up the world, they were in fact a librarian. Let's get back into the UMA testing environment for modded trades. So inside of this villager, the last thing we can do is right click them and modify the trades. First of all, you can determine whether or not the villager will generate new trades. Generally, if you're making a modded villager, you wanna make sure this is off. From here, I can double click this new button to make a new trade. And if I wanna get rid of it, I can hit the delete key on my keyboard. We're gonna generate a new trade and I generally don't like to reward XP. So I'm gonna turn this off and always make sure to use this max button to give it max uses, unless you want the trade to only be used a certain number of times. From this menu here, I can left click on the items to change them to relatively basic things, such as let's say nine gold ingots 
traded for one gold block, which is a relatively simple trade here. One thing you might notice is I can't name the items or enchant them. So to do that, I'm going to have to go out of this menu and go into the offers area and then open up the recipes list. Then each trade will be listed as a compound. So let's add another trade onto the villager here. I'm just going to be a regular dirt stone trade, reward XP, no, max uses. And as you can see now, there are two different offers in here. Opening up this first offer is going to yield the trade with gold, and the bottom offer is going to yield the trade with dirt and stone. I can also change the items from this menu the same way, but now I can also change the name. So maybe this is a coin, and this is going to be a coin stack. And just like other item edits, maybe I can put an enchantment on this item. I always use lure, so let's just do lure three on this gold bar here. Then I'm gonna change the secondary trade down here for something else. Why don't we use some iron? So I'm gonna get iron and I'm going to say one iron block for three iron doors as the trade. And I don't want any enchantments on this. And let's save my changes really quick. Moving back onto the villager, I like to cross check and make sure that all my trades came through. And as you can see, I have the iron block to iron doors trade and the gold ingots to gold block trade. Now, one thing you might be asking is how would I have two items to buy something? To do that, I'm going to generate a new trade. I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to take this item here. I want to copy it, select the compound up here, paste a new item in, and you realize now we have two buy items. If we quickly close these drop downs and cross check back in on the villager, you'll see that this trade isn't really working right now. It's only showing one dirt block. That's because the second buy item needs to be called buy and then capital B. So now this item will cost two dirt blocks, which of course are the same item. So why don't we change the second dirt block to something else? How about an iron block again? Another way to do this is to open up this menu and then left click on this empty box here to add a secondary item. As you can see now we have the dirt and the shovel here. I'm gonna get rid of two of these trades. I'm gonna get rid of this one I just created with the shovel by clicking the delete key here. Another way to get rid of trades is by right clicking and clicking the delete button here, which will get rid of trades as well. When we're modifying items here, items can cost up to 127 of a singular item. So I'm gonna have this be 127 dirt and 64 iron. One thing to know is that as you go higher than 64, it will not display that number on the trade. So even if this item says right here that is 127, in game it's just going to say 64 plus, which means you won't exactly be able to tell how many items are needed for this trade. It's bad practice to have trades that go over 64 because of this, because you can't actually tell their trade value. Once I've added these two trades in though, I'm going to save the game and port this back into Simu again. Once we are back in Simu, we're going to see this villager again. It's going to go invisible in just a moment here. But I'm going to right click on the villager to see the trades. And as you can see, the trades have made it in just exactly as we put them, that dirt being at 64 plus again. To make these trades, all you have to do is have the right items. So as you can see, I have the 127 dirt and 64 iron. So I'm going to click that and it will reward me with a stone. We're going to jump back into the editor so I can show you how to get a villager the second way on this emerald block. So the second way to get a villager is by copying from a previously existing villager. There are a lot of things to consider here and you need to be careful of, which is why it's probably easier to generate the villagers in world. But if you've had the max amount of villagers, it might be easier to copy paste them in like this. So as you can see, this emerald block is in the same chunk as my lime concrete, so I don't need to worry. But if I was moving a villager to a location in a different chunk, I would need to make sure to select a different chunk and put them in the entities list. If the entities list doesn't exist, like it does in this chunk, I would need to type in capital E, N-T-I-T-E-I-S. I'm gonna get rid of this because I'm not putting the villager in this chunk, but just know you might need to if it wasn't a chunk that did not have an entities list. Moving back into the chunk we want to be in, I'm gonna take my villager, I'm just going to click copy on it, and I'm gonna paste another one after selecting the entities list. I will paste another one right into here. Now we have two duplicate villagers and these are not working yet. First off, I need to change the position of the villager to match the position of where it's actually supposed to be. Our coordinates from earlier were negative 75. We're gonna do 0.5, of course. To start, I'm going to ignore the Y value. We're gonna to move to the Z value and see that it is 77.5. Now, some of you might notice that these villagers are on the same coordinate list here, which means that if we move this way, we can see that both of the villagers should be on the negative 77 Z coordinate. And that's because taking coordinates on maps are not the exact same way that this coordinate system in UME works. So I'm going to add which is sort of like subtracting one in the negatives from each of my values, which gets me 76 and 74. Our coordinate from earlier for Y was also 18, and you'll notice that's also subtracted one to 17. 
always subtract one from your Y values. I'm gonna click check to get this loaded in correctly, and this would not work yet. That's because villagers contain something called a UUID. This will be at the bottom of the list, and you can see this random weird string of characters and numbers. The only thing that you need to know is if you copy paste in it a villager, you must change this UUID in one way or another. One way to do this is to just slightly change this. So perhaps change this a seven to a six, and that would be enough. Or you can use an online UUID generator to do this. I've just opened up this UUID generator page. And as you can see, there's a UUID listed for me right up here. You can, I'm gonna copy that, or you can hit the copy button. And the only issue is that this has hyphens in it. So we're going to need to make sure to remove these hyphens from using this website. So back into the editor, I'm going to double click on this to edit. I'm going to click that in and paste it in. Now I just need to get rid of the hyphens. So I'm going to go through and just quickly delete all of the hyphens in this list right here, just like this. And all of the hyphens are gone. Then I can click enter to paste that in. Now that we have edited the UUID, and we've changed the position of the villager in the correct chunk, the villager should be ready to be ported on. I'm gonna save this world and go back into Simu. As you can see, we've loaded into the world and these villagers are exactly identical. It's just one of them is moved over a little bit to the right and it has the exact same trades because we just copied it over. So once that villager is copied, you could edit it however you want. And once you have your villager back in the world, you would wanna break those gold blocks. That was just to make sure that the villager didn't move when we were spawning it in. But that is going to be all for the UME villager editing tutorial. I know there was a lot that we went over today. It might've been a little bit complicated, but I hope that you were able to learn through this video. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. And if you need any other tutorials or you're looking forward to more tutorials coming out, make sure to check the playlist that is right next to me. Have a good day, folks.